Our next problem, problem number six, is focused on basal area growth rates. Uh, remember, basal area growth rates will be expressed as a percentage. You can think of them uh, like an interest rate or discount rate, a similar concept. And in order to calculate them, uh, what we do is we go up to the tree, and I'm going to draw a cross section of the stem at DBH. So there's our tree. And so you can measure DBH. And then we use a bark gauge to measure the thickness of the bark. And so there will be a diameter inside the bark right now, right here. So this is going to be diameter inside the bark now. And then we increment core the tree. In this particular problem, we're looking at a five-year basal area growth rate. So we increment core the tree and we measure the distance of the last five rings. So that's going to give us an inner circle. I'm not really drawing these to any sort of scale, just giving you the concept. And that's going to be the diameter inside the bark five years ago. And so as we look at this problem, our DBH now, you really can't get a deviation in the past because you don't know what bark thickness was, equals 12 inches. Our diameter inside the bark now is going to be calculated by basically removing the bark. See, there's a thickness of the bark we measured. We may have measured another thickness over here. So if you simply subtract both those thicknesses out, it's removing it across the diameter if that makes sense. And so this is going to be, for this problem, all these units are in inches so far. Um, I'm going to not include them just to abbreviate this. It's going to be 12 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.8 equals 10.7 inches. So that's diameter now inside the bar. We basically have a bark thickness on both sides that amounts to 1.3 inches total there. Okay, now I want to see what the diameter inside the bark five years ago was. It's kind of going to be kind of a similar process. DIB five equals, we're going to take the diameter inside the bark now, 10.7 inches that we just calculated. And what we do now is we subtract the increment core measurement we got right here but we need to double it to also account for this distance. And if I could draw adequately, you would expect the tree to be more and more evenly round. And so that's gonna be minus two times that 0 0.8. And so you can see our ring length was 0 0.8, and this problem just happened, that was one of our bark thicknesses too, just a coincidence, they're not always the same. And so two times 0 0.8 is 1.6, 10.7 minus 1.6, equals 9.1 inches. So now we have these three diameters. We really aren't going to use DBH further. We'll be focused on the diameter inside the bark now and the diameter inside the bark five years ago. Now, you can see in the equation that you've been given, it includes basal areas, not diameters. So you do need to have a formula memorized to convert basal areas to diameters. In English units, that formula uh, is going to be basal area equals diameter squared times 0 0.005454. And this 5.005454, it's simply combining uh, constants like pi with unit conversions where there's 144 square inches in one square foot. So that's where that number comes from. We have another video up that shows how that's derived. Okay, so now we can start calculating these basal areas. So basal area now is going to equal diameter inside the bark now, 10.7 inches. We square it, and then we multiply it by 0 0.005454. And punching that into the calculator, we'll remember order of operations, square this quantity, then multiply it. That's the order. It's going to be 0 0.62448 squared. We do the same thing five years ago. So basal area five years ago is going to equal the diameter inside the bark five years ago, not now, which is always smaller because trees don't shrink in diameter. So it's going to be 9.1 inches squared times 0 0.005454 equals 0 0.62448. 
0.4516 feet squared. So to this point, you had to basically know how to do all these different parts of this problem. It, it often helps me to draw out this you know, little three circle diagram so I can keep track of what I'm doing. And that just ensures a common mistake is you won't double the ring thickness. You'll only account for it on one side of the tree, not both sides of the tree. So that's a common point of error on these problems. But once I have these two numbers, you can see they fit into the equation right here and right there. And so now it's just a matter of plugging all this into my equation um, and calculating the answer. So bag is Larry growth five in the last five years is equal to 0 0.6244 divided by 0 0.4516. So order of operations, you would do that first and get that quantity. You can see it's going to be something like one and a half. Now we raise it to the one fifth power. If you're using a calculator, it's going to be simpler to use a decimal. So if you just type one divided by five in your calculator before you do all this, you'll see that equals 0 0.2. So I'm going to put a 0 0.2 there because you can enter that more easily in your calculator. You're less prone to make a mistake. We then subtract one. So order of operations, divide this quantity by that quantity, then raise it to the 0.2 power. On your calculator, that's often a little button that says, you know, y to the x, or it may say x to the y, or it's a button that looks like that. Then we subtract one. Then finally, once we have that quantity, we multiply it by 100. And in this case, all that adds up to 6.69 in our units. Remember, this is like a compound interest rate percent. And how do we interpret this? That's kind of an intermediate rate. It's not super high, it's not super low. So that's telling you you may not need to fit immediately. You may be thinking about fitting in the near future. So. That's the solution to a basal area growth rate problem.